welcome to our second session of the industry series dialogue i am pragya mishra and i am heading the customer success and operations department at courseplay courseplay is a 360 degree employee growth platform uh so today we cover yet another relevant topic which is digital transformation in the industry upskilling for the tech driven market and we have the highly experienced mr sandeep das with us to shed light on this topic Mr Das is the vice president and head of learning and development at IIFL Finance a seasoned L&D professional with over 20 years of experience he brings a wealth of expertise in talent management leadership mentoring and digital transformation so i'd like to welcome you now mr das i'm so excited to speak to you and get a lot of inputs from you today thank you pragya thanks for the introduction and uh, uh, hello to everyone So let's delve into the first question right away. Uh, in your opinion, what do you think are the key drivers that are that is that are pushing organizations towards digital transformation today? Right. Thanks, uh, Pragya. It's a very uh, pertinent question that uh, gets asked uh, across multiple forums, <clears throat> and um, uh, digital transformation is an imperative for any organization across industry. and uh, which is agnostic of the kind of customers that you serve whether it is a bottom of the pyramid customer or top of the pyramid customer uh, digital transformation um, is uh, is the way to go ahead now what what exactly digital transformation uh, from a lnd perspective um, mean so um, i think the biggest transformation that we have seen in the recent times Uh, because of the advent of digital technology has been in the field of learning and development so i'll step back to two and half years uh, when uh, an unforeseen emergency in the form of covid struck everybody yeah and uh, you know, the the early adopter of uh, digital transformation was the lnd team which by that point of time had been introduced to multiple digital uh, mediums of delivery like zoom hmm. or a webex or a microsoft teams google meet to name um, other platforms so that was the first time when the learning and development team uh, stood up to the occasion and ensured that employees across location across organizations uh, are quickly trained on the new ways of working um, then fast forward to today um, um it it's just been two and half years since we uh, went into that but uh, the pace with which digital transformation uh, has uh, become a norm of the day uh, it's immense we have seen lot of technology in the form of ar vr uh, and uh, chatbot artificial intelligence and the latest one being chat gpt or generative ai and of course uh, other uh, platforms now what does it do it basically helps us to improve the employee experience uh and uh, being more data driven uh, being more contextual so um, all these tech innovations and digital transformation uh, have uh, made us more agile we are able mm. to reach uh, to uh, a large population in a very short span of time use this technology to create more contextual learning experience and uh, measure the impact of the learning so a key factor for any organization any business leader or um, uh, any uh, i would say ceo would be to uh, derive the maximum roi of training and yeah. uh, one of the uh, uh, challenging part of any lnd professional was how do we integrate the data which comes from multiple uh, um, directions within the organization to um, bring forward the roi which takes into account all the aspects now uh, the digital transformation has helped us to integrate all the data coming from various parts of the organization uh, and create analyze those data and uh, i would say uh, factually uh, talk about uh, the roi or the impact um which is which is more contextualized thank you so much for this so uh what i understood from this point is that uh, digital transformation has actually helped to unify the data 
that comes from different places and i really like the point where you mentioned that lnd uh, the lnd team were the pioneers of adopting this because they quickly of course covid happened quickly and everyone had to get on their feet and start thinking and adopting this uh, as pioneers they were the ones who were driving the entire organization so yeah that makes a lot of sense uh, my next question is so in the midst of all the technological advancement that is happening how can companies identify the most crucial skills that are needed and then how do they ensure that their workforce is upskilled and up to date with the current trends right so um, again uh, digital uh, on the technology that is available today has given us a uh, lot of ammunition to identify the skill gaps that exist in employees gone are the days when we had to um, um uh, individually meet people do an assessment center identify the skill gap and it used to take a lot of time today uh, multiple uh, technology is are there where we are able to um, uh, deploy assessments at scale whether it is a learning management system or an hrms or independent platforms where you can assess employee skill sets and then identify the gaps which are very very personalized in nature so uh, we are not just using a, um, a mechanism where you uh, identify the skill at a role level now we are able to identify the skill gap that exists at an individual level and um uh, the generative ai uh, and i think the new age learning management platforms have given us uh, the power to roll out very individual uh, contextual level uh, learning to each uh, right. employee so it's a hyper personalization that is possible right now which was mm-hmm. earlier not there now um if you talk about the most crucial skills today whenever we talk about irrespective of any function any department one of the critical skills that uh, uh, exists everywhere right now is uh, people's ability to think uh, from a technology point of view what are the various uh, technologies which are available in their respective forums so if i talk about a marketing team uh, there is a traditional way work used to happen but with advent of lot of technologies yeah people are not expected to be become technical experts of course you have different people to manage those technical aspects but as a functional leader how are you able to map uh, the use cases of a particular technology how does it simplify the work at uh, a department function individual level how does it uh, enable you to use the various data points um, create a uh, culture of collaboration create a create a culture of data uh, based decision making so so the decision that you are bound to make are more uh, accurate because it's supported by data not by assumption so technical skills uh, first uh, we should know what are the various technological advancement that has happened in the field of finance or marketing or hr right. or administration the second part is that how do you map those technologies to the context um, or uh, to the area of your operation and create a road map to use those technology to simplify uh, become more agile uh, become more efficient and accurate in terms of service delivery so i have a follow up question to your point where you said that for example a marketing team so they had a set way of doing their uh, you know carrying out their process their daily activities so how do you suggest a company should be able to drive the adoption of technology especially in departments like marketing finance because in customer success i have seen that uh, a lot of young people are already tech savvy and they want to reduce their work so they know if they automate it their work will get reduced but then how do these uh, traditional departments like finance and marketing take it up okay so uh, here i feel um, the hr team or the lnd team uh, there has to be somebody who is a digital evangelist you need to have a digital evangelist in an organization uh, hmm. who um, impregnates your thought with uh, the possibilities because today 
uh, it is a world of possibilities you think anything that is possible and you will definitely find a solution for it so um, for example a um, lot of companies in a, in a country like india a uh, lot of companies were uh, dependent on reaching to the customers who come from various part of the country right now right. um the early in earlier times there used to be a central uh, and and language becomes a barrier in a country like india yes um and because of the um uh, various limitations that people used to operate under uh, there used to be a common language uh, uh, through which communication uh, used to flow now with uh, technological advancement uh, we are able to create content in multiple languages in a fraction of second right so our ability to deploy different communication for different uh, customer base who are based across the country uh, it makes the communication more seamless which is more understandable and uh, the organization the customers uh, everybody benefits out it's a win win situation for everyone involved all stakeholders i think it's a win win situation and at the end of it i think we are able to provide a much better customer experience today that's i think that's a very important point and that answers my question uh, uh, very nicely so this this leads me to my third question uh, in order to bridge the skill gaps what strategies or initiatives can companies employ so i believe we've covered we've already covered one point briefly uh, in my last question but then if you could shed some light on this point as well um see as leaders it is important for all of us to first understand what's happening in the world of technology um and leaders have a great role to play in organization uh, uh people uh, follow leaders and uh, and they tend to uh, emulate their leaders so in any organization uh, as a learning and development team or an hr team our first priority should be to uh, develop our leaders and make them aware about the various uh, possibilities those are there so that uh, they further cascade it down and also create a, uh, a road map for their respective functions or business which involves a lot of this transformation right so that's where i spoke about digital evangelist so yeah. learning and development team the hr team has to uh play a role of a digital evangelist and today what i see myself doing is that i'm not just limited to technology pertaining to learning and development yeah. uh, uh, if i come across any technology that uh, can benefit the business or can benefit the marketing team or can benefit the finance team i go around and talk to them and say hello uh, this is something that's there and this can transform the way we uh, service our customers why don't we take a look yeah. into it it's it's a long journey it's not that you can uh, uh, transform everything in a while but there has to be a starting point and lnd here can play a great role um, apart from the bau stuff that we do uh, we have to uh, rise to the occasion uh, get equipped ourselves and then uh, create this mindset shift within organization right right understood so my my next question is again related to leadership and what we can do is we can delve slightly deeper into this because in fact in the, in my last session uh, of the industry series dialogue this was a question that i had asked that a lot of times we forget or not forget but we kind of ignore the leaders of the companies right we we feel that they are bound to know something they are bound to lead they are bound to have the knowledge but then what does Uh, what role does the leadership team have overall in driving this continuous learning and upskilling culture and how can lnd teams directly help the leadership team in helping them uh, propel this <clears throat> so yeah so i'll continue from the point where i stopped uh, leaders definitely play a very critical role um lnd team has to work uh, closely with the leaders to understand uh the business need and uh, uh and and also um uh, bridge the gap between those uh, business need and 
the transformation that are possible through various technology right and once we kind of have a road map where the business feels that okay we need to uh, segue into a different uh, method of working some process changes policy changes in view of the technological advancement uh, upskilling then uh, what happens really is that to map uh, who are the people who are already equipped within the business who are able yeah. to will be able to kind of uh, take the lead nobody would be completely equipped but uh, to identify the skills of people uh, find a relevant cohort of people who have some bit of proficiency uh, yeah. you kind of start with them and then create a uh, developmental journey identify the skills uh, map the proficiency level because you can't equip everybody at a proficiency level of 5 uh, right so, so uh, assessing the current skills taking them through a developmental journey and gradually um, the transformation start taking shape because when people uh, take up new skills they start contributing hmm hmm so uh, it's important that uh, that conversation happens with the leadership team where such upskilling initiatives are taken up uh, but it should uh, first start from identification of what's the current strength of the team uh, run an assessment identify um, segregate people basis their proficiency level uh, and then uh, start a very segmented approach of picking up different segment and taking them through different uh, developmental journeys rather than kind of carpet bombing everybody with the same thing yeah yeah this makes a lot of sense understanding what every leaders or every individuals forte is and help like make them lead uh, with that particular skill and then also see where the gaps are and then help them achieve that so this makes a lot of sense um my last question is is a very important question that every organization is aware of but they also need to be reminded about it once in a while uh in understanding what are the risks of not investing in upskilling initiatives and how can companies mitigate these risks uh the biggest risk is to lose competitive edge uh a business uh, will eventually lose its competitive edge if they do not uh, upgrade the skills of their people so i'll i'll take you back to a story uh, we all uh, have spoken about the kodak story the nokia story where the reluctance in the management to adopt mm. new technology eventually led to their demise mm. so that was a time when uh, technology upgradation determined where an organization will eventually lead into today it is not just technology because technology has become so much affordable that it's it's not a very cost intensive thing to procure any technology mm. it's an open world everybody has access to technology we have the right set of people uh, so acquiring technology is not problem but if any organization today does not upskill their people who are able to use the technology to uh, service the new age customers see the demographic dividend of the world is changing <laughs> okay yeah. so um, so if you have japan younger people have become old older yeah. people are becoming older then we have a country like india so coming back to the context of india we have the highest demographic dividend right now mm-hmm. and and this demographic dividend would be there for another 50 20 years before the uh, majority of indian population um, starts getting into a different segment and then you have new age customer base who are entering the market right the right. preferences are very different they are much more informed uh they they prefer to uh, do research on their own than rely on uh, an expert advice everybody uh, typically when we talk about gen z or the digital natives uh, they uh, they behave like pseudo uh, experts with a mobile device and a host of uh, generative ai led applications 
they have lot of lot more information than they earlier used to have so if you need if you have to build a trust um, um in the eyes of these customers you will have to up your game you cannot know lesser than them and uh, assume that uh, you will acquire that customer so so the knowledge level your ability to handle the new age customer the digital natives the uh, millennial gen z who are now uh, equipped with technology uh, the companies have to upskill their people there is no choice right now understood understood so again this is a very valid point where everyone has information in their hand now so companies need to uh, stay updated with it and to ensure that then they don't lose track of their vision but then see the point that you mentioned about gen z is that information is everywhere and is very easily available but then how do companies ensure that they are able to segregate uh, information that is very easily available versus what they have to focus on right vital information that every for example every employee should have right versus free flowing information that should be avoided for example whatsapp forwards so how can again companies ensure that their employees are getting trained with the best information that is out there right so pragya uh, that's where there would be a mix of data analytics and generative ai uh, which comes into play um i remember when we used to uh, in the old times when we used to uh, call customers there was a standard script uh, which used to be practiced and followed across yeah now um uh, our employees would not look at who the customer is at the other end they just uh, know that this is a script we have been uh, trained on and we know need to follow the script to the t right so uh that was that was the old old uh, time today uh, uh predictive data analysis and the host of uh, digital trail that people leave behind allows us to uh, identify who the customer really is what are the traits what are the likes what are the dislikes and if you yeah. match that with generative ai the generative ai uh, on the go maps the person of the customer and creates uh, statements or create uh, the solution uh, mm-hmm. which is much more acceptable because then uh, i will be talking to your needs not generic term so that's the world of hyper personalization if you are not uh, talking to the needs and and, and in fact um, uh, we can see this uh, see this being used by um a um, lot of politicians in the current context right a lot of organization are using this to tune the conversation in the manner the uh, uh, profile of their customer or the profile of their listener so um, that's that's where a lot of uh, change is bound to happen uh, this helps companies to uh, create a better experience in the eyes of the customer gain their trust uh, and provide a solution that's actually uh is needed by the customer basically you read the mind of the customer even before you talk to them you read the mind of people before even before you interact with them and that's possible because of uh, uh doing a lot of analysis of the digital trail what kind of search patterns they do they have what kind of products they use yeah. uh, you know, what what kind of uh, Uh, sentiments they leave behind when they put up a post on a social media platform so lot of sentiment analysis lot of data analysis right. you map all this together bring generative ai and then you have a perfect recipe right wow i mean this point was uh, very interesting for me because you perfectly summed it up on how we we jo- just don't need to use data that is out there we need to collaborate different types of information that is out there it can be Uh, for an individual it can be for an organization and then how we can club it and then use it for the best advantage because like you very rightly said people don't want to hear a, a predetermined script they want to know how much of research an individual who's approaching them has done before approaching them so this is very well put so thank you so much for uh, all the information that you have shared today uh, i have personally learned a lot 
uh, be it uh, when it comes to identifying the skill gaps on how leaders can drive uh, upskilling and the learning culture and the various points that you put uh, on how companies definitely need to be updated otherwise they lose their competitive edge in today's workforce and and the technological part has been extremely insightful so thank you so much for this uh, mr sandeep okay. thank you it was a pleasure speaking to you it was a pleasure from my side as well thank you so much for those questions